What's up divas and divos? It's your girl April. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So in case you guys are watching this, I'm actually not here in this environment. I'm probably either about to be on my way back, depending on what time of day, of day you watch it, but I'm actually in New York and I wanted to make this video for you guys so that way you'll be able to have a real talk because I am going to be coming home Wednesday evening. So I wouldn't have been able to do real talk on Tuesday. I mean, I could have, but I would have been so busy. It would have been kind of hard for me to take time out to do real talk, especially, you know what I'm saying, being with my family. So um, I wanted to do real talk. So I did two real talk, you know, recordings for today. Um, this week. So if you see me last week and I have on the same clothing, it's because I did um, the same two Real Talk videos in one day. So that way you guys would have a Real Talk while I'm in, in New York. So yes. Okay. So in case you guys didn't get to see last week's Real Talk, please make sure you watch it because it was really interesting. One of the subscribers that I have who had emailed me well, she had basically emailed me about her, you know, herself, her weight, or whatever, and how she felt. Um, her fiance's friends were making me, making her feel, excuse me. And he actually wrote me. Her fiance wrote me because he figured out who the email or the real talk was because she kept watching it. So anyway, and also I do have a new addition to my family. So in case you guys have missed that, missed that, or don't follow me on Instagram or Facebook, which you really should be hello then I have a new little puppy and so she's seven weeks and by the time you guys see this video she'll be eight weeks so she is definitely um, a little baby um, she's the runt of the litter she's really small um, she is a miniature um, Yorkie mixed with a miniature pincher so she's really tiny and her brother and sisters are actually bigger than her so I like her because she's so cute. Her name is Luna, which means moon in Spanish, right? Yes. So she's a cutie. Um, and if you're wondering, do my dogs like her? Coco actually loves her, and I'm shocked. But he's very protective over her. And Sugar is acting like she could care less. I don't know what the problem is, but Sugar is kind of like when I put, like this is Luna, and then... I'll put sugar next to her and sugar will turn her head and go this way. She keeps doing it. She won't snap at her, but she would not give her any type of attention. And I'm not really sure what that's all about. Um, I don't know if she doesn't like puppies because if you guys remember, sugar is a shelter dog, um, a rescue dog. I rescued her a year ago. So um, I don't really know if she is a I really don't know her background to be honest I just know she was taken from her owner and I don't know why so uh, hopefully she'll get out of the rut that she's in because I hope she's not feeling jealous because she's still my girl she's still my princess my pretty little princess so yeah I don't know but I'm shocked that Coco I'm really shocked at the both of them because I really thought it was going to be total opposite but listen anyway so, I really can't really say much about myself because I've already explained that in the video I recorded earlier for Real Talk. Um, so, I don't really have much to say to you guys about myself because I don't I already share that. But, um, I'm still trying to lose weight. I'm excited about this new Dollar Tree opening up down the street for me. Um, 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 I guess that's it. I gotta edit some videos. Yeah. That's about it. So, you guys, if you want a real talk video about yourself, meaning you got a situation or you know of a situation and you would like to share that, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. If you would like to change the names of the people that you are talking shit about, then you can go ahead and say, April, I have changed the names to whatever. If you don't do that, then I'm just going to assume that you've already changed the names and I'm just going to read it as is. Um, um, and if you don't have a name, then I'm just going to make one up for you. And you might not like the name that I give you, but, I mean, it is what it is. So, yes. Um, other than that, I guess we're all good to go. We are going to do this video, right? Um, yeah, I really don't have much to share because I've already shared it. So, 
we just gonna get right into this real talk, okay? Okay, guys. Hey, April, you can call me Heather. I really need some advice from you. Lately, I have been feeling like my boyfriend is just not the one for me. Me and my boyfriend have been dating for going for for four years going on five. We met at work and started off as really good friends. At first, he really wasn't my type of guy because he's short and light-skinned. I know I'm light-skinned too, but I normally don't go for that type of guy. Same thing here. But we fell in love anyway, and I truly do love him. We have a little girl together, and he has two other kids of his own. We have talked about marriage, and that's something we are planning to do soon. But I just feel like he's just destined to be a little fuckboy forever. I just finished school, and I'm about to be working in the medical field. And he has a good job, too. But he doesn't have his own his priorities together at all. Right now, I'm saving, and I want to buy a house soon. But he keeps talking about getting a new truck. Why would you want to buy a new expensive truck when you know we are trying to buy a house? That makes no sense to me. Also, I recently suffered a miscarriage two weeks ago. It has, it was, I was two months pregnant, but it was very devastating to lose a child. I've never went through anything like this, and I really don't know how to deal with it. I really need to talk to someone about this because I feel like I may be slipping into a depression because of that. My boyfriend was supportive of me during that time, and I appreciate it. But that was just two weeks ago. So this weekend is his 30th birthday. I wanted us to spend some time together, and I wanted to do something nice for him. But do you think he wants to spend time with me? No, he does not. He's in Atlanta for the weekend, partying with his friends. I'm so pissed at him and so hurt and embarrassed. Why would you leave your woman when you know, when she needs you the most? I know you're supposed to turn up for your 30th, but couldn't we have did it together? Now I'm reevaluating our relationship. Am I overreacting? What do you think? I just want to hear your thoughts on my situation. Please respond back. Even if you don't put it in your real talk, I don't really have too many girlfriends to talk to. So I would appreciate another woman's point of view. I put a picture of me, but don't show it. Laugh out loud. P.S. I love your family and your videos. Keep up the good work, girl. Thanks, April. So she is so pretty, okay? She got a nice shade, too. Girl, I'm like, can I be like you? I'm saying, I'm... Looking at her shape, I think I'm about to go walk 10 miles today, okay? Because the other day I walked four and a half, so I'm saying, like, girl, what you doing? Because I'm saying, I need to look just like that as well. So, let's get into this here. So, Heather is basically contemplating, reevaluating her relationship with her boyfriend. We're going to call him Jason. They have been together going on five years. They have a child together. And basically, he really wasn't her type. They were good friends at work. And so, he's not her type because he's short and he's light-skinned. She really don't go for the short or the light-skinned. Okay, I could feel you on that because I don't either. I don't like him short and I damn sure don't like light-skinned. Um... And a lot of people find that strange, but, you know, we each have our own preference. Everybody has a preference, okay? Um, but she also feels like he don't have his priorities in order, meaning they're trying to buy a new house because they're supposed to be getting married, and he want to buy a brand new truck. Now, she does have a point. You really shouldn't be buying a brand new car when you're trying to get a house because you need to get a loan on your house and the bank is going to look at every single expense you have, meaning Dollar Tree visits, grocery store visits, movie visits, whatever you're buying with your credit card or your credit, they are going to be looking at that with a fine magnifying glass. So you definitely don't want to go out and purchase a new big expensive item unless you're paying cash for that. And I'm pretty sure that no one has, well, I don't know, there are a lot of people that have the cash, but I'm pretty sure in her circumstance, her boyfriend does not have that much cash laying around to buy a brand new car outright cash and not have to finance or lease it. So I can totally feel her on that. Like when you're trying to buy a new house, 
you're not supposed to go out and make big expenses okay that's that's one thing you're not supposed to do because the banks look at that they're trying to tie all your money in in order to either approve you or unapprove your ass for the house and like definitely you can wait if you want to buy a house then you can wait some things you have to put aside it's hard my friend Shay told me this because she's a homeowner you have to put things aside you have to either use your cash you have to use cash to buy things because these creditors these banks they're looking at all of your expenses they're looking at how much money you're spending so you want to make sure that you're in good standing so for one no it's not a good idea to buy a brand new vehicle and maybe you Heather need to sit down and have a talk with him and explain that to him like listen when one person when you're trying to get a loan for a home when you're trying to purchase a new home and you're trying to get a loan for it because a home is very expensive and I'm pretty sure you guys are not going to be able to afford a, a home brand new or not outright but you need to explain to him like when you're trying to buy a home a brand new home a home in general you can't go out buying big items you can't be spending your credit card like that because the banks are looking at all these things and that can be a huge no-no they'll deny you for reasons like that you know what I'm saying you don't want to go out and buy expensive items expensive ticket items because you can get denied you know what I'm saying? Your credit score can go down. Just from buying a big ticket item, it could be a ring, okay? It could be a wedding ring. That's a big ticket item, okay? When you think of it, it's a big ticket item. And your credit goes down. Your credit score goes down. The banks see this. It's like a red flag to them, okay? So it changes the whole just outline of the whole contract when you purchase or when you start applying for a home. I mean, it's not rocket science, but that, I mean, it kind of sucks that you have to kind of like limit yourself sometimes they say don't purchase big ticket items for like a certain amount of months or a, a month or whatever either way you I just know that you're not supposed to do that so it's really not a good idea to go out and purchase like a big ticket item and it's also not a good idea to put you know what I'm saying so much on your credit card or just in general now I'm not really sure why he wants a new truck if you guys have a car already and it's not in bad condition and you can still get around in it and it can last until after you've gotten into your home, then you need to tell him, like, listen, we've got more important things to do. I know if I had to choose, I'm going to buy a house or I'm going I'm to try to get a home before I can get a car. You know what I mean? Like, hello? At least I know nobody can evict me. Well, the, the bank can evict your ass if you ain't paying your mortgage. But I just know that I would rather have a home versus a car, okay? Um, and, and it's always nice to be a homeowner and to each his own. Some people may feel like it's not. I mean, I would love to have my own home. Um, but sometimes I feel like, you know what? What if I didn't have the money to fix certain things? I would be fucking screwed. So I, I, I like the fact that I rent a home because sometimes I get tired of being in one particular place. And I don't know if this is the particular place that I want to spend the rest of my life in and die. So... For me to rent a home is really good right now because I have my kids spread out around the world. So I just like to rent a home. But, and I already have it planned out. When I get older, I'm not even going to have a home. I'm not even going to have an apartment. I'm not even going to have anything. I'm going to just have some stuff over here at Tati House, some stuff over here at Jerron House, some stuff at Wazza House, some stuff at Nay House, and some stuff at Mumsy House. And I'm going to spend a month with them, each one of them, okay? So each one of them is going to get me for a month, okay? And I'm going to have my own room at their house, and I'm going to have my own shit up in there. And then when that month is up, I'm going to go to the next person's house. And if they live further from each other, like in other states, well, then I guess I would have to spend like three months at one person's house, then three months at another. And then, you know what I'm saying? That, I already had that plan out. I already and told the kids that and shit so you know that that's my plan that's my little plan but each person is different you know what i'm saying i got enough kids where i don't need to have my own shit no more i could just go stay with them for a few months and then move on to the next somebody gonna get tired of me they gonna send me on my way so it, it is what it is you know what i'm saying but um his priorities now i understand i, I can totally relate to how you feel about you just had a miscarriage two weeks ago. Let me tell you something. I've had two of them. And I've had two of them because of my fibroid tumors. I did not know I had those at the time. Um, but that is the reason why I had mine. And it was at like two months as well. Um, so maybe make sure you get that checked out. But the first one that I had, the first miscarriage that I had, they were actually six months apart. I was really depressed. Like, so 
it was the very first one I've ever had and I was very hurt and I was very depressed about it. And so I could totally relate to how you feel. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only woman that has been there and done that and has felt that way. So it takes time. And each person that goes through something, it, it's it's a learning process and it's, a t it's time. You know what I mean? You can't expect to get over that just that quick. I think it took me like um, a couple of months to get over it. And, you know, my husband, though, he was, you know, something he wasn't really that supportive. Like he felt bad for me and shit. But honestly, to me, he wasn't really that supportive. We was like kind of going. I think what he felt like he felt like I went and had an abortion. But you was there when I started bleeding. So. You know, I, I, I was calling him while I was at the hospital and he couldn't leave work. But he felt like he told me later on, like he felt like I had an abortion because he felt like I was cheating on him or whatever, which I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? And this was during the holidays. This was during Thanksgiving. And so that night, that same day that I had a miscarriage, do you know this motherfucker went out? drinking with his friends and didn't come back until Thanksgiving morning smelling and reeking of liquor you know what I'm saying like so you left me in pain like you're in pain bleeding to fucking death it's because you so called say it was hurting you too listen let me tell you something sometimes as women we can't always rely on men to comfort us and that sucks especially if we're in a relationship with them that really sucks because we're supposed to be there for one another but sometimes as women we can't rely on one uh, on our own men to comfort us and to be there for us especially in our time of need especially when it's something traumatic like that like you know what i'm saying no matter how lengthy the time is it just sucks that sometimes as women we cannot rely on our own men to be there as our our support system because sometimes they don't have that sensitive side in them and which really sucks as well you know they're not emotional like that they're not emotional creatures like that which really fucking sucks you know what I'm saying so to me I, I could relate because I understand how you feel like that shit that shit hurt me so bad and then come like like a few days after that like you know it was Thanksgiving I really didn't want to have dinner you know what I'm saying I cooked dinner but I really wasn't in the mood um, because just like the day before, two days before that, I just had an abortion. I mean, not abortion, a miscarriage. So, you know what I'm saying? But this nigga thinking I'm had, I had an abortion. Like, damn, dude, you was right fucking there. The person that was with me at the hospital when I was having this miscarriage was my daughter, Tati. She's always been there with me. But she was there with me, you know what I'm saying? She laid there in, a, in like, in a chair next to me because I was in the hospital. And she comforted me and she stayed by my side. I'm sorry, but he could have left work. That's just my true feelings about it. And to feel like, you know what I'm saying, like you, Heather, now it's his 30th birthday. I don't really know about are you supposed to really turn up when you turn 30 because I know I didn't. I fucking cried. But I can totally understand, like, you know what I'm saying, y'all are a couple. Y'all been together almost five years. And for his birthday, he done left the and left and went out of town with his friends you know that's just what men do sometimes and i'm not trying to make any excuses for him but you know something sometimes like i said they're not as emotional creatures as we are and he may feel like okay there was two weeks ago she's over it now she's probably okay now because he's over it. it it's not bothering him the same way that it's bothering you and that's because for one he's not a woman but two like I said, sometimes they're not emotional like us. For three, he didn't have that baby growing inside of him. So, in all honesty, he really can't feel what you feel. He can't really can't relate to how you relate to it. You understand? And, like, I get that because my ex-husband was the same way. He really couldn't relate to it the way that I could because it was in me it was growing inside of me and you get your hopes up high and I'm pretty sure that he did as well but it was in a different type of way like when you first get pregnant a man is happy just as much as we are some men may be not happy and some women may be not happy but some women feel like just so wonderful. They feel like this different emotion and they're ready. They're planning for it. They're ready to name the baby already. They're trying to feel if they feel anything inside. When a man, he just basically like, 
you know, nonchalant about it. It really ain't affecting him like that. Like men sometimes need hands on. They need to be able to see it for what it's worth. You know what I'm saying? Like, and us as women, we're the total opposite because it's growing inside of us. So men become more attentive and to, to pregnant women. I've noticed sometimes when they're they start seeing like a little belly bulge because then they can see like this is really happening this is really taking place and the same thing with a miscarriage you're a woman you have this baby growing inside of you he's a man his feelings and his state of shock is totally different from yours so in all honesty the way he feels is probably how he felt like you are feeling you know what I'm saying that's probably how he felt and he probably didn't see any wrong in it. Now, evaluating the relationship, you know, there are some things that you 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 know, I would definitely reevaluate my relationship. Definitely if you're about to get married to somebody and definitely if you plan on buying a home with somebody because those two things are major. Like, you know what I'm saying? Getting married to someone is really really major and that's a huge decision. And buying a house together is also a very huge decision. It's not like buying a car together. You know what I'm saying? It's a big, huge decision. So I would definitely, definitely have a talk with him and let him know like, hey, you know, I forgot what I named him. Jason, okay? Hey, Jason, listen. I really did want to celebrate your birthday with you, but you went out of town and I felt kind of left out and I also felt like, you really weren't taking my feelings into consideration about the baby that we just lost. Sometimes we have to tell men because they ain't mind readers. None of us are mind readers, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes we have to tell them. We have to express to them how we feel. We can't just automatically assume that he can read our mind or she can read our mind. It don't work like that because, girl, if it did, then there will be no problems in the world. If we could read each other's mind... There would be no problems. There would be no war. There would be no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? It would just be a peaceful fucking place. But unfortunately, men are not the best mind readers. So, my dear, it is very wise to reevaluate the relationship because, listen, if you feel like he's still a, a child and he isn't matured enough and he doesn't take care of his priorities, then you really want to make sure that this is the person that you want to marry. I'm not going to say that this is the person that you want to um to make sure this is the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with because people do say that but you know what just because you marry somebody does not guarantee you that you're going to spend the rest of your motherfucking life with them meaning this nigga could get on my last motherfucking nerve and we're going to get divorced just next week okay so let's not say spend the rest of our life with because we all change our minds after a while and we all change how we feel about a person so I would definitely make sure that this is the person that I want to marry. If he's not matured enough and he doesn't take certain things seriously, then you definitely want to make sure of this. But you also want to sit there and let him know, like, listen, I need to have a talk with you. And, and this is the reason why. Because like I said, he, he doesn't have the baby growing inside him. He doesn't really know. You know what I'm saying? What you feel, he's not feeling. You know what I'm saying? The pain that you feel, he's not feeling. The hurt that you feel, he's not feeling. And as a woman, like, I know with me, when I had my first miscarriage, I felt like less of a woman. And I would constantly cry about that. Like, I felt less of a woman. And I felt like, damn, I don't feel woman enough because I couldn't carry this baby. So I felt less of a woman. Okay? And I'm not saying that may be how you feel, but maybe that's how a lot of women feel when they have a miscarriage. But they feel like they blame themselves for this. They feel like they're less of a woman because of this. You know what I'm saying? It's all different reasons. And he can't feel that way because he's not you. He's not carrying his child inside of him. So his feelings that he may have are not the same that you may have. For us, we probably take it a lot more serious and deeper because we are the ones that were carrying this child. And so it sucks and it hurts when we have to, you know, go through having to lose a child. That's, that's a hurtful thing. So I would definitely have a talk with him and I would definitely reevaluate it. But I would definitely have a long conversation with him about a lot of things. About the bank situation, the car, the miscarriage, the partying and everything. I would definitely have a conversation with him. You know what I mean? You guys have been together for quite some time and it would really suck to have to end it on a bad note because of miscommunication. You know what I'm saying? 
communication is always the key to everything. So definitely have her talk with this young man and see where this leads you. And on that note, we're going to move on to the next real talk. Okay, so this one is awful long. A mess, real talk, a messy situation, one hell of a ride. Hey, Diva. Okay, now let's get straight to business. I'm 27 years old, successful with a career in legal and my own apartment and pay my own bills. Let's say my name is Jennifer and his name is Peter. Back in November, I met a guy on Tinder. Wasn't really my type. He was also older, 37 years old. But I figured anyone I was with who was, wait, but I figured anyone I was with who was my type. But I figured anyone I was with. Okay, basically she said she figured anyone she was with was her type because basically she was with them. So they're 10 years apart. It never worked out, so why not try something new? Okay, so she, she stepped outside the box. This guy is a musician. He has two kids that he doesn't see. We will get into that later. Now, mind you, he's 37 and she's 27. He was very honest with me and told me about his story and that back in the day he used to live a rock and roll lifestyle and do drugs, etc. And that he's not perfect. Damn, I should have ran then. But Diva, something about his honesty and wearing his heart on his sleeve like that really attracted me because my exes were typical liars. We got on so well. We got along so well. We were talking for a month nonstop before meeting one another. It was the best date I have ever had. And we were inseparable after that. We were like made for one another. We made it each we made one another so happy. We were just obsessed with each other. And he loved showing me off and I loved showing him off. And I loved the fact that he loved showing me off. And slowly but surely some strange shit started happening. He had a history of depression, and I basically found out that he never left that rock and roll lifestyle behind. He started canceling on me. We only lived five minutes apart, saying, I'm tired, I don't feel good. His ex wasn't letting him see his kids, and he made it seem that he was the victim, and he did nothing to deserve it. And I can't imagine how the pain of not seeing your kid would feel. So I always felt bad for him. And he also opened up to me about a recent suicide attempt. And I was so ride or die for this guy. I fell so hard for him, Diva. I told him I'll be there for him to support him and not give up on him while he gets himself and goes through the tough times and, you know, goes through the custody battle. My naive ass shaking my head. I was so white hearted. Don't really know what that is. He spiraled so out of control and turned to alcohol and drugs. I only found this after our breakup. He did this from me. I only found this. I only found this. I only found this after our breakup. He did this from me because he knew that. Oh, he hid this from me. She said did this. He hid this from me because he knew that was my deal breaker. So basically he spiraled so out of control. He turned to alcohol and drugs. And I only found out about this. After we broke up because he had hid all of this from me. And he and and let me tell you, it came to a point when he canceled on me more than he saw me. The last time he canceled on me was two hours before he was due to come over. And I was like, screw that. I'm not even replying. Diva, I didn't reply for like four days. And I thought he would reply by now. And he didn't. I noticed he also deactivated Facebook and his Instagram. And I got so worried. I was texting him, asking if he's okay. Like two or three days passed, I thought he, well maybe two or three days passed and I thought he maybe did something, okay, two or three days passed and I thought maybe he did something to himself. I was sick and worried and, and I contacted his best friend. His best friend called him right away and he said he was feeling down and wanted to go off of social media to get away from everybody and everything. So... Peter then texted me finally saying he was sorry and he doesn't want to talk and he was drunk. I know what you're thinking, Diva. What a damn mess. I'm too smart for this shit. But I just thought maybe if I was the only positive thing in his life, I wouldn't let him down. And he needed me to be there for him. After that text again, after that text again, I didn't hear from him. So I sent him a message. One message each day just asking if he's okay 
and just reminded him, I'm here, and no reply. I still wouldn't get a reply, but I still would message him, I'm here if you need me. A week passed, and I was like, this shit is so damn lame and disrespectful. I know depression is hard. I've been through it myself. But was really what was really hurting me, Diva, is I text him saying, I'm not doing this anymore. He's selfish and basically broke up with me and he wished me the best in life and said, I don't want to, I don't want to string you along like that. Um, I don't know what your true intentions are me, of me are. No response, Diva. So I wasn't surprised. But let me tell you, that night he reactivated his Facebook and changed his Facebook profile. I was online. I couldn't sleep because I was so hurt over him and I couldn't believe he was back on Facebook online and not speaking to me after a week. But now he finds the strength to go back on Facebook. I didn't message him or anything. Screw that. But next morning when I woke up and I went to check on Facebook, he blocked me on Facebook and Instagram. I was like, damn you. You couldn't even message me to even tell me to fuck off. You damn, that really hurt because I really, you know, put up with him and I put his happiness before mine. But I didn't text him or anything. I just left it alone. I did all I could do for this man. Two weeks passes and he finally messages me saying he's sorry how things worked out. He fell off, he fell off of the rails and went back on drugs and he's back into counseling. I've always pushed him to go to counseling. I've even offered to bring him. But he was like, no, I'm fine. I'll sort things out myself. And he said I was always there for him and I deserve someone to be there for me. And he's sorry for everything. So basically, I deserve better. I was like, damn, okay, really? I text him back that same day or the next day, rather. And I just said, glad, glad you're in counseling. And I said, good luck. Now, fast forward like a month or so. And I watched 13 Reasons Why, which is a Netflix film. And I just broke down that maybe he's suffering like that. And I had to check up on him. So if you guys have never seen 13 Reasons Why, it's a Netflix film and the girl kills herself and leaves a tape for everybody. So I text him the next day after watching 13 Reasons Why and I just wanted to check on him. And he replied right away saying he thinks about me a lot and he wanted to text me. And I was like, boy, bye. And that he has a drug test for the custody of his children and he's been clean for like 10 days. Like he sounded optimistic, he would pass. Boy, are you dumb? I said nothing because I knew he wasn't going to pass and I knew he would find out the hard way. I was like, okay, good luck and, and kept it short. But here's the kicker, Diva. Back when we together, back when we were together, I knew he was going through a tough time and I would have done anything to help him and to make him happy. I would have bought him an early birthday present and I bought him an early birthday present and it was a record player. Cause like she said, he's a magician and he was, he always admired. So I bought him this record player that he had always admired. When we were out, we'd always talk about how he's saving up and he was saving up his money to get this record player and how amazing it is. So I spent my own hard earned money on that record player as a gift. Unfortunately, this was just before he spiraled out of control. So I never got to give this to him. His birthday was two weeks after I checked up on him. And I just felt something inside me like I needed to get rid of this and give it to him and move on because I had it in my, my apartment and it was constant reminder of him. So I texted him, Diva, and I sent him a picture saying, happy birthday. I got you this, blah, 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 and never got to see you. Can I drop it off when, it, when it's suitable? He was like a kid over the moon, so grateful, saying I didn't have to, but it made me happy just to see him happy. He also started calling me babe and all that, like as if we were back together. But I wasn't having any of it. I was just being short with him. I set a date to give it to him and just to drop off the record player. Tell me why he had to disappoint me one last time. I texted him the day before saying I'll drop it off at 4, around 4. And he was like, great. Thanks, babe. And all of this good, good shit. And at 3 a.m. that night, he messages me saying he can't accept the gift. And it would be a constant reminder of how he fucked up and let me down. And I was so mad. I was like, please don't cancel on me again. It means so much to me to give it to you and just accept it. 
And he replied later that day saying, I'm sorry, he's just so stressed and he appreciates it, but he's probably not going to be home until later that night. We were meant to meet at like four in the afternoon and this was at three that afternoon. I was so mad. I texted him, don't even worry about it. And I blocked his ass. That was really the last straw. It's been four months, Steven, and I can't stop thinking about him. It's like every time I hear an ambulance or any bad news, He's the first thought that comes to mind, like, is he okay? I hope he's not suffering, and it's not fair on me. I had a bad week last week with family family stuff, and I just broke down. My mom is sick and family problems and work stress, and, you know, I felt so down, and I thought, damn, Peter probably felt like this all the damn time or worse. I couldn't help but text him. I said, I just wanted to check in, and I hope things are, are good for you, and that I hope you're feeling better. I said he doesn't need, I told him also, you don't need to text me back, but just to know if he ever needed something, he should let me know. He didn't reply, but that was fine. Diva, how do I stop this guilt? It's like I picture him suffering and I feel like I need to take action. I can't save someone from themselves and he was certainly never there for me because he has so much going on. I don't blame him. It's just it must be hard for him. Should I just leave it alone and stop trying to see if he's okay? I'm no superhero and I can't keep going through this. Sorry this was long, Diva. I was naive to think this rock and roll days, his rock and roll days were behind him. I blindly believed him. I would never have gotten involved if I knew he was doing drugs or was an alcoholic. And I told him from day one, that's my deal breaker. That's why he never told me after that until we broke up that he was back on drugs and using alcohol. Because he was afraid I would leave him. Damn, lesson learned, but at the cost of my sanity. Thank you. Whew. Now that I need to take a drink of water for. Dry mouth like a motherfucker. Okay, so I can't even remember what her name is because the freaking email was so freaking long, okay? Who child. Like, seriously? Ooh, where okay look where is this email at because girl hold up guys okay I don't even know what happened to the email but basically okay basically it all boils down to this okay this young lady, I don't remember what she called herself, but his name was Peter. I can't even remember what she called herself, but we're just going to call her Nancy. So, she basically got into a relationship with somebody that was 10 years her senior. 10 years older than her. You know what I'm saying? She's got a good job. She's got her own place. And he's got kids that he's never sees. And also informed her that, you know, he used to use, he used to live a rock and roll lifestyle. You know, he's a musician. So, he used to live that type of lifestyle. He doesn't anymore. But the person that she got involved with is also, to me, it seems like a manic depression. He's just a depressed person. Or maybe he's not. You know what I'm saying? Like, he says that he gets depressed a lot. He has thought about suicide attempts, um, et cetera, et cetera. But behind her back, he was also still using drugs and using alcohol and never planned on telling her this because it was a deal breaker. So the whole time they were dating, he was still using drugs. Um, and she never knew about it until after the breakup. But during the time that they were together, he started like, you know, canceling dates on her, saying he was tired. He, you know, he wasn't feeling well. And they lived five minutes apart. Now, here's my thing. I don't really think, to me, this is my honest opinion. I don't really think he's depressed. I think the reason why he acts the way he does is because he's on drugs. You know what I'm saying? And he's an alcoholic. Now, those two things can depress you, but I think that that alcoholism and being a drug addict plays a huge part in his ways, in the way that he handles himself and the way that he handles you. You know what I'm saying? Like, here's the thing. You can't lead a horse to water. You can't help someone that doesn't want to help themselves. You know what I'm saying? You can try to talk to them until you blew in the face like I just said to you guys well, last week. 
But until then, they're not going to want to do them do anything to help themselves or to better themselves until they're ready to. So yeah, that's great. You wanted to help him get counseling. And yeah, that's great. You want to help him. And he's depressed. And you're checking on him. And he's not replying. Sweetheart, you can't lead the horse to water. You know what I'm saying? That old saying, like... I understand you want to be there for a certain person. I understand you want to be there for him. I understand you want to help. I understand you're worried. But here's the thing. You can't only do so much, okay? He is his own person. He is an adult. He is the one that makes his own decisions. Decisions, excuse me. He is the one that is going to be the one that changes the entire game changer. Until he wants to better himself... He's not going to until he's ready to. You can force him to go to counseling. You can force him to go get help. You can sit there and hold his hand. And he'll go along with everything that you're doing. But sincerely, he's not going to want to change until he's ready to change. And that sucks because, like I said to you guys last week, sometimes there are people that are... There are two different type of people, basically. They're the ones that you have to give the tough love to because they just don't get it. They got to learn the motherfucking hard way. And there's the ones that, you know what, all I got to do is tell you once, maybe even twice, and you get it. I'm that type of person because you only got to warn me like once or twice, and I'm good. I'm not trying to figure it out on my own, or I'm not trying to learn my lesson on the hard way. You know what I'm saying? If you warn me, you warn me for a reason, okay? But then you have those people that you just cannot treat like that and like i said like with my son i said it to you guys last week i have told him many times to stop doing certain shit and he doesn't listen and i try to use the same tone that i'm talking to you guys with mm -hmm. but there are some people that you just cannot talk to like that to try to get them to open their motherfucking eyes and ears and to figure it out you have to come at them on some raw raw type shit like you really have to come at them and with him it seems like you're kind of like baby in him nancy so and he's feeding off of it you know what i'm saying some people love the attention they're attention seekers they love that attention he's a grown-ass man sweetheart he's 37 years old you 27 there's no reason why you should be babying a 37 year old man and trying to get him to see his rights and wrongs and to figure the shit the fuck out on his own there's no reason why you should be doing that he should be the one trying to teach you okay but Listen, he's not going to figure it out until he's ready to figure it out. You don't really know his whole story. You don't really know why he can't see his kids. The drugs and the alcohol might just play a part in it, you know what I'm saying? But you don't really know how he gets. He might be a very violent person when he's under the influence. So with that being said, like I said, you can't lead a horse to water, sweetheart. You've already given your advice. You've already given your, you've already consoled him. You know, you already allowed, you've already sympathized with him. You've already allowed him to lay your, his head on your shoulder and all that good shit. You know what I'm saying? What you gonna keep doing? Let me tell you something. I'll never let nobody stress me out too motherfucking much, okay? Like, I'm all for helping people. I want to help anybody I can, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what we do as human beings. We try to help one another. And I think that that's only fair, is to help one another. You know what I'm saying? We are supposed to help one another. However, if I'm constantly helping you and being concerned about your ass, but you're not being concerned about your own self safety and self, then why the fuck should I? Sometimes we have to put a stern foot down and turn our backs. As hard as it might be to turn our backs on someone because we know that they're heading in the wrong path. They are being very destructive. You know what I'm saying? Self-destruction. Remember that song by KRS1? Self-destruction. You're headed for self-destruction. I know y'all remember that, right? I was it KRS one? It was more than just KRS one, but they the ones who made the song. You know what I'm saying? But y'all remember that song, self destruction. You had it for self destruction. I think it was due to drugs. You know what I'm saying? And that's like the perfect example. You know what I'm saying? As hard as it, it is, how as hard as it is for us to turn our backs on people that we know are self destructing themselves, and we've been trying to help them, and they just just continue sometimes you have to turn your back on them because that should eat you up inside it will fuck with you okay it will fuck with you emotionally it will fuck with you physically and you're not even the one destructing yourself but in a way you are because you're allowing this person to feed off of your positive energy and to allow you to try 
and drag you down with them. And they may not be literally trying to drag you down, like force, like peer pressure, like, yeah, smoke this or drink this. But their toxic vibe and their toxic ways is fucking feeding off of you and it's dragging you the fuck down. Because now he got you, every ambulance you hear, you looking. You thinking about him. That's not cool for you to feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know at a time I used to feel like that about my ex-husband because he would be drinking all the time. Not all the time, but when he would drink, like, I would, he would go out and drink. And I would feel so scared because I would be like, okay, he going to get drunk and try to drive back and get arrested again. So every time I would hear a car, a police car go by when he wasn't at home, I would automatically assume or think of him. You know what I'm saying? And that, that, that right there is not a good feeling. You know what I'm saying? That tears you up inside. And like, I understand that you want to help Peter. I understand that you love him and you care for him. However, you have to let him be and you have to let him figure it out on his own because as long as you continue to hold his hand he's never going to get better because he's always going to know that someone is there there are people in the world that need not to have people there for them to get to shit together some people are the people where you got they know that they got this person in their corner and this person in their corner they're really not going to do too much to you know get their shit together now they're not gonna really help themselves so peter seems like he's one of those people and as long as you Keep like, oh, I'm going to make sure he's okay. Or, oh, I'm going to call and check on him. Listen, let me tell you something, honey. And I know this may seem selfish, but I'm sorry. I'm not going to continuously keep paging. I mean, paging. God, where am I at? I'm not going to constantly keep texting motherfucker and leaving them messages if they're not responding to me. Nigga, you got like two times to not respond to me and I'm not going to fuck with you, okay? But if I know you are having a crisis and you're depressed, okay, I may keep reaching out to you. But if you, t if you like telling me you don't want to be bothered, you can't accept my gifts or this and this and that, I'm done. Like, you know what I'm saying? You have bent over backwards and you have exceeded your hand. And this nigga keep pushing you the fuck away. What the fuck? You're like a glutton for punishment. You know what I'm saying? saying like listen honey it's time that you cut the biblical cord and let that nigga go because he's in his own world and he is going to continue to be in his own motherfucking world until he ready to get out of that shit okay and until then there's no coming back you need to leave him the fuck on alone and go about your business you know what I'm saying wish him well pray for him if you have to but stop sending him messages <laughs> and stop telling him you're gonna be there for him because he was going to rely on that shit. And I'm sorry, but like this. Straight up, I ain't about to continuously be there for somebody that they ain't even there for them own selves mentally. Like seriously, like just like with my son who's 19 who moved out. Like he had his own issues, you know what I'm saying? He he smoked weed a lot. You know what I'm saying? Here, you know, it's legal. You're 19. You can get a card. A man on a card. But you know they be around their friends. Always smoking weed. That shit started really pissing me the fuck off. Okay? I got tired of it. And he came up in my house a couple times drunk, too. Like, hold the fuck up. You only 19. You have no business. Like, I had to go in. Okay? You ain't, gonna, you ain't about to come up in my motherfucking house drunk. You know what I'm saying? I had to go in on him. And he was like, yes, ma. You know, he... he but he still, you know... He still went ahead and did it again and then did it again. At that point, you out. Don't come back to my motherfucking house no more. I had to put him out. You know what I'm saying? I had to literally put him out and I let him know you can't come back here for your shit unless you got the police to escort you because you're not coming back up in here in my house. Well, why was I at the school picking up Mumsy and he calls Nay? He doesn't know that Nay's sitting right next to me in the car. He thinking she's at home because she gets out an hour early. So he, he calls me while I'm at the house. I mean, at the school waiting for Mumsy because he knew what time I was going to pick her up. And he knew, you know, I get there early. He texts his name like, could you open the door? Because I'm outside. I got a ride and I was coming to get my stuff. Nay was like, I'm not at home. And he was like, you're not there? No. So, you know what I'm saying? He tried to play me. Sure enough, he had to come through with the motherfucking police. I'm not bullshitting. If I put you the fuck out for a reason, then there's a reason. But he's one of those type of people where you got to show him tough love. Now, here you are. You done went to New York City. And I love you dearly. You my heart. This is my middle child. But you done went to New York City. You supposed to be doing something with yourself. You hanging out with your friends. You know what I'm saying? Running the streets smoking my my oldest son then told me everything so you still doing the same dumb shit okay i done sent you money last week because you didn't have none i done sent you a package i'm done 
I don't want to text you no more. I don't want to check on you. I haven't texted him in a week, okay? But by the time you get this, see this video, I had already seen him because I'm going to go see him. But prior to this, I hadn't texted him in over a week because, you know, you calling me up talking about you can get my plane ticket. I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? But you under the influence. You mad because my son, who's 25, is going off on you and in on you. So now you don't want to be there because he didn't already called you on your shit. So you think you're going to come back here. Nah, you're not going to come back to my motherfucking house with that bullshit because I'm not having it. Because now I feel like I'm an enabler. All right. And if I allow you to come back from my house because you're running from him, my son, then you're just going to come here and do the same shit. And I'm not about to be stressed the fuck out. I done already scrubbed his room clean, cleaned the carpets, put in new furniture, new curtains and everything. He left that room looking like it was a trap house. OK. And now I got to fix up my garage because of him. You're not about to come back here and destroy my hard work. And you're not about to come back here and be on no fucking bullshit neither. So with him, he's one of those type of people where you got to give him tough love. And my tough love to him is... I'm not fucking with you right now because you're going to have to get your shit together. He done got a job. He done texted me today. He said he got a job at the YMCA and I'm happy for him, but I'm not going to allow you to fuck with me emotionally. Like it's hard for me to turn my back on my own kids because those are my kids. But if what I'm doing for you and I'm talking to you and you still not getting it and you still coming in here a certain type of way and you still doing that shit, then you know what? I'm going to have to not fuck with you. I'm going to have to show you that side of me. Because you're going to have to get it together because I would hate to sit here and watch you deteriorate yourself into to nothing versus just turning my back. I would rather turn my back on you and walk away than to sit here in your face and watch you deteriorate. Like, who does that? And that's what you would want to do, Nancy? Listen, he's going to get himself together, hopefully, maybe one day soon. But here's when it happens for some people. They, got, they won't get themselves together when they're really down on their luck. OK, when they have got nothing and nobody left. I have an uncle that was like that. You know, what I'm saying my mom's brother. He was a crackhead. You would see him out in the streets and walk right past him. And he didn't want to get help. We had to leave him the fuck alone. He was homeless. We hadn't heard from him for years. People would tell us, well, yeah, we seen your uncle Randy. He was getting beat up by somebody and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? He finally turned himself around after we left him the fuck alone. And those are the people like, you have to leave them the fuck alone in order for them to just get it. And it's unfortunate because you want to help somebody that you know is desperately in need of help. And they just don't want to help themselves, but you want to help them. But they're not trying to help themselves. It's hard, but sometimes you just have to leave that person the fuck alone. Like, dead serious. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it is what it is. My advice to you, sweetheart... Just leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? Leave it in God's hands because God will definitely take care of that for you. Definitely. Um, and that's the best thing you can do for him. He'll figure it out. But don't, don't fuck with yourself and don't depress yourself over, you know what I'm saying? A dude, like seriously, like, I'm sorry. I'm not about to let no man stress me the fuck out and worry, have myself looking out the window at ambulances driving by. Not cool. Leave it in God's hands because you, for all you know, you could be making the situation a lot worse. So that is going to be the ends of real talk for today because it was a long one. It was a doozy and I love you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. And on that note, I'm going to go because I got to get ready to get mumsy. And it looks like I see a temperature thing on my, my screen here. I'm not really sure if that's a temperature. It looks like it or whatever because I've had this camera rolling for two hours now. So... On that note, I love you guys. Stay deep and delicious. And make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Leave your comments below. And I'll see you guys in the soon to come video. Bye. Say bye. You're always getting stuck to something. With your little sharp nail. Say bye. Say bye.